Helen and Dylan go to the movies. Can you spot anything odd in this place? There's a spider hiding in this guy's popcorn. This lady has a working camera, which is not allowed in the movies. The seats are numbered in a random order in this row, and there's a monster hiding behind the seats. Can you spot a criminal among these two truck drivers? The second guy is just shipping tomatoes, but someone scrawled the word help on the window of the first truck. Therefore, the first driver is the criminal. Can you guess which driver is more dangerous? The second one, who uses such weird decor for his car? Breaking news, someone stole exclusive diamond shoes from the local museum. Many people visited the exhibition that day, but the criminal had left no clue. The police arrive at the crime scene. Detective Smith checks the camera records and spots the thief right away. Mm -hmm. What about you? Something about this lady is very suspicious. Her height increases in the second footage. This probably means that she's wearing the stolen diamond shoes. Kelly throws a pajama party, but one of her guests is a criminal. Can you guess who? This lady is a thief. Oh, no. She hid the stolen items inside a pillow. Let's check how eagle-eyed you are. Can you spot three differences between these two pictures? Here they are. Yes. What about these pictures? Are they identical? Nope, there are three differences. Mm. Can you see three differences here? Here they are. Great job. Yes. Philip runs a publishing house. One day, he gets an anonymous message. His best illustrator, Victor, has a secret relationship with one of his female co-workers. Oh. Only four ladies work in Philip's farm. Sheila is an SMM manager. She has just returned from the Maldives. It was her honeymoon. Bella is a content manager. She's very shy and lives with five dogs. Lily is a part-time writer. She's single and parties all the time. And Kelly is an office manager. She's very ambitious and writes her own book in her spare time. Can you guess Victor's secret crush? Bella. Philip has white dog hair on his jacket, just like Bella. Crystal is a doctor. She arrives at a medical conference and takes several pictures with her colleagues before the event. In an hour, the local janitor finds Crystal unconscious in the storage room. Later, Crystal gets better and tells the police, I was walking to the toilet. The last thing I remember was someone pushing me from behind. I don't know who did it. Police questioned all the doctors. Everyone claims that they were listening to the report when the attack took place. Officers examine the pictures before the conference and immediately identify the criminal. What about you? Crystal tried to protect herself and tore the string on the criminal's neck. Oh my god. So it was this guy with a broken badge. Harold is the richest man in town. This evening, he lost his memory because of a car accident. His only family is his daughter. When Harold wakes up in a hospital, two ladies claim to be his daughters. One of them is lying. Can you help Harold identify the real one? There's a photo frame near Harold's bed with a picture of him with his daughter. She has a mole on her cheek, and this lady too. So she's the real daughter. Peter gets lost in a haunted house and finds three doors. 
he needs to choose one of them to escape. There's a cute family of polar bears behind the first door, a couple of hungry, angry wolves are waiting behind the second door, and they haven't been eating for seven years, and there are hundreds of venomous snakes behind the third door. Which way is more or less safe? The second one. Wolves can't survive without food for so long, so they're not a threat anymore. Mary is heading back home from work through a forest road. Somewhere along the way, she gets lost. She comes across three caves. Mary needs to choose one of them to go ahead. There are venomous scorpions inside the first cave. They can't wait to bite Mary. Inside the second cave, there's a tiger that will eat her alive. And inside the third cave, there are man-eating bats. Which cave is more or less safe? If you noticed, the sun is still up. It's daytime and bats are sleeping. So the third cave is the safest option for Mary. Detective Smith gets a task to investigate a robbery. He questions a witness who saw the thief escaping. He says, in my car's mirror, I saw a masked man driving away in panic, but I wrote down the number of his car. Detective Smith takes the note with the number. Police find four cars with similar number plates. Detective Smith carefully examines all four cars and figures out which one of them belongs to the robber. How? Since the witness looked at the car number through his mirror, the image was reflected. It means that this was the original car number. Amy lives with her three sisters. She's a professional violinist. Her sister always complains that she loves music more than her own family. One day, Amy leaves for the gym, and when she returns home in the evening, she discovers that all her super expensive violins are broken. Oh, God. She immediately calls the police. Detective Smith arrives and interrogates everyone. Amy's elder sister, Sarah, says, I was sleeping the whole time. I don't know anything. Detective Smith asks her what the other sisters were doing at the time. They were both reading books and eating dinner in the living room. Only the younger sister was having fun at a party downtown. Detective Smith immediately realizes who broke the violins. What about you? If Sarah was sleeping, how did she know who was doing what? Duh. This implies that she's hiding something. A woman in tears enters Detective Smith's office and asks for his help. She explains, I was walking down the road when a man approached me from behind, snatched my phone from my hand, and ran away. But Detective Smith suspects three people and invites all of them. But everyone says that they didn't steal the lady's phone. Detective Smith checks their phones and immediately understands who did it. Can you guess who snatched the phone? Take a look at the wallpapers. This is the lady's dog, so the first guy stole her phone. Oh, no. After a particularly large snowfall, Chuck walks outdoors. He discovers a weird thing. He has half as much snow in his yard as his neighbors, but it seems like Chuck is not surprised at all. Can you guess why? Simple, Chuck's yard is half the size of his neighbors. Vicky is filming a video blog about this haunted house. Suddenly, she freaks out because this place is full of frogs. How many frogs can you see in this picture? The correct answer is 11. Vicky runs away to the basement and sees a creepy collection of clown masks. How many masks can you spot? This one is not a mask, it's a portrait. Philip is walking down the street. Suddenly, a woman approaches him from behind and sneaks his wallet. She runs away and hides in one of the houses. Philip follows her. The owner of the house is inside. Philip asks him, 
has anyone visited you today? The owner replies, nope, neither have I left the house. I live here alone and work from home. After hearing the owner's words, Philip knows for sure that this guy is a liar. Oh. How come? There are three cups of hot tea at the table and female sandals standing near the door. So he's probably an accomplice of the thief. In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat candy. No one there ever reads or studies. Mrs. Relum came back home after a day-long snowball fight and a sauna with her friends. Her three daughters spent a fun day at home. She asked them what they were doing. Hannah said, I was doing a puzzle. Elle said, I was at my friends. We built a snowman. Ava said, I just stayed in bed, watched movies, and drank hot chocolate. Still, Mrs. Relum could tell that one of her daughters lied. Who was it? It was Hannah. Take a closer look at her puzzle. She barely started it. There are three snowmen standing in Allie's backyard. Which one of them is fake? It's this one. The sun is shining and it's the only one that's not melting. Allie is participating in a winter quiz. Whoever wins gets a brand new skateboard. And she really wants it. Can you help her answer the questions? Here's the first one. What do you call a disrespectful reindeer? Rudolph. Derived from rude. Got it? What kind of photos do elves take? Elfies, of course. Santa and his reindeer went swimming. Where did they go? to the swimming pool. Meanwhile, a bunch of snowmen went dancing. Where did they go? To a snowball. During the winter holidays, everyone gets presents. What did a cow get? It got a calculator. How many of these did you get right? Would you manage to get a snowboard if you were Allie? I hope so. Those weren't easy. Now let's test your attention with a couple of short riddles. Here are the rooms of two flatmates, Jack and George. Take a closer room and tell. Which one of them has a girlfriend? It's Jack. Look, there's a picture of the two of them on his wall. Okay, now let's take a look at these two flatmates. Both are girls. Which one of them has a boyfriend? My bet is the girl who lives in this room. Look, she has two cups on the table. An anonymous note was sent to the police, reporting that one of the students wasn't a real person, but a robot in disguise. There was a picture of a class, and the person must be in the picture. Who seems suspicious to you? Look, there are some electrical sparks around this person. Can you now find a robot in this photo?
look at this guy's footprints. They're wheel footprints. He should be a robot. Okay, now this is a hard one. Who's a robot here? It's this woman, the only one who's not sweating on this hot summer day. Also, there's an on-off switch on her neck. Charles woke up in a small room. He didn't know what happened, but there was a door. Unfortunately, it was locked, but there were three buttons. On one button, there was a circle. On the second one, there was a rhombus. On the third one, there was a square. And there was also a sign saying 12, 3, 6, 9. Which button should he press to get out? The clock right above the door is there for a reason. If you draw lines connecting 12, 3, 6, and 9, you will get the shape of a rhombus. So, Charles should press the button with the rhombus on it. Mr. Jones lives alone, and he left for Massachusetts to spend the winter holidays with his family. When he returned a week later, he noticed a weird detail about his house. What's wrong? Look at the roof of his car. It was definitely showing, but someone shoveled the snow in his front yard. That's weird. During the winter holidays, Vienna got a collection of her favorite book series. She spent a week reading them and left them all over the room. Now that she's done, she has to arrange them nicely on the shelf. She can't find book number six. Take a close look at her room. Can you help her find it? This book seems like it's book number nine, but actually it's book six, just turned upside down. During the winter holidays, a dangerous criminal escaped from a prison in Texas and took a plane to New York. New York police arrested three men that fit the description and asked them where they had arrived from. The first man said that he'd arrived from London. The second man said that he had arrived from Toronto. The third one said that he had arrived from Florida. Who is the criminal? It's the second man. He's underdressed for a person who arrived from cold Canada in winter. He probably arrived from Texas, but lied. Karma is a dog. She's 13 years old. Her owner, Jessica, is 40 years old. Question, how many years ago was Jessica exactly four times Karma's age? It was four years ago when Karma was nine and Jessica was 36. In Santa's house, there are elves working all year long to make presents for kids around the world. 10 elves make 10 plushies in 10 minutes. How much time do 100 elves need to make 100 plushies? If 10 elves make 10 plushies in 10 minutes, then it takes one elf 10 minutes to make one plushie. So, 100 elves will need the same 10 minutes to make 100 plushies. A woman has three sons, David, Cedric, and Philip. She's about to have another son. What do you think she'll name him? Trent, Evan, or George? The woman seems to choose names that start and end with the same letter, so her fourth son's name will likely be Trent. Jane woke up in a dungeon and couldn't remember what had happened to her. She came across a big metal door locked with a passcode. Can you help her figure out the last three digits? 8549176? Look, there are supposed to be 10 digits in total. So far, 
Each one has been used only once, so maybe Jane should use the remaining three digits that haven't been used yet. 0, 2, and 3. But in which order? Well, there are just six combinations to try. But look, the other digits are positioned in alphabetical order, and so should these three. So, the rest of the passcode is 3, 2, and 0. Jessica has two pets, a dog Milo and a cat Cairo. When Milo was four years old, Cairo was half his age. Now that Milo is 10 years old, how old is the cat? When Milo was four, Cairo, who was half his age, was two. It means that there are two years difference between them. If Milo is 10 years old now, then Cairo is eight. Let's check how attentive you are. Now I'll be showing you some photos, and you have to find out what's wrong or odd about them. Here's the first one. What do you say? The colors of the rainbow are inverted. Correct! Here's a new one. Will you notice what's wrong here? Pay attention to the calendar. It says February, but there are 31 days. February has either 28 or 29 days, but never 31. This one is even harder. Keep your eyes wide open. What's the mistake here? Look closer at the calculator. They go from smaller digits on top to bigger ones on the bottom, just like on a smartphone. But calculators have the opposite arrangement. Okay, here's a new one. What's your call? The reflection in the water is wrong. Here's the last one of these. Be attentive. This time, there's a car on the ice skating rink. Cassie won a trip to a luxury resort in the Maldives. She goes there on a boat along with three other hotel guests. One of these billionaires is fake. Can you guess who? This guy sneaks silverware from the buffet and puts it in his bag. If he's really rich, why would he need that? Speaking of imposters, one of the boat crew members doesn't belong here. Can you guess who? This waitress hides a police badge under her floral garland, so she's probably working undercover. Finally, Cassie comes ashore. Three porters offer to carry her suitcase. Can you help her choose the right guy? The first guy is a runaway criminal. See this poster on the pier? The second guy is a ghost. He's too transparent for a human being. Therefore, Cassie should choose the third guy. The hotel manager offers Cassie three options to choose from. A room on the eighth floor with a gorgeous sea view. A luxurious apartment on the second floor with a garden view. Or a separate authentic bungalow on the shore. What would you choose? The first option doesn't exist because the hotel is only a five-story and there's neither an air conditioner nor a fan inside this bungalow. So Cassie should choose the second option. On the beach, Cassie meets triplets, Sienna, Gemma, and Emma. Emma borrows $20 from Cassie. The next morning, Cassie meets one of the triplets in the lobby, but they're so identical that Cassie can't distinguish them. 
We know for sure that Sienna always tells the truth, while Gemma and Emma always lie. What three-word question should Cassie ask in order to get back her $20? The correct question is, are you Gemma? Sienna, who only speaks the truth, would say no. Gemma, who always lies, would also say no. And Emma would say yes, because she's a liar. Therefore, if the answer is yes, Cassie can demand her money. And if the answer is no, Cassie can ask Sienna or Gemma to remind Emma about her debt. After breakfast, Cassie goes diving. She sees a lot of identical clownfish underwater but one of them doesn't belong here. Can you spot the odd fish out? This one over here. Underwater, Cassie finds a treasure chest, but it's locked. Can you help her crack the combination lock? There are three turtles painted on the treasure chest. Each turtle has a certain number of rings on its shell. It's a hint. If we count the rings, she'll get the code. Eight, four, five. Cassie opens the treasure chest and finds a pearl necklace. She goes to the local jewelry market hoping to sell it. John says, This jewelry is not so precious, but I can offer you $50 for one pearl. Noah says, Trash! These pearls are fake! Five dollars! This is my last price! And Mia says, Madam, we can sell it at auction. Rich guys will pay hundreds of dollars for this necklace. I can be your agent and take 15% of the revenue. What do you say? One of these guys is a scammer. Can you guess who? Noah is wearing another person's work badge. Therefore, he had stolen someone else's identity. Cassie wants to buy a new swimsuit. She walks into a fitting room and sees these three pairs of legs. Can you guess who's broke? All three women have relatively new sandals, but let's take a look at their toenails. The first lady has an excellent fresh pedicure. The second one doesn't have any nail polish, but maybe she just prefers to look au naturel. And the third lady has toenails with peeled nail polish. Therefore, she's the one who's broke. In the hotel lobby, Cassie meets two of her roommates, Tina and Jeff. One of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who just by looking at this picture? Tina is a werewolf. She has handcuffs on her leg. Cassie goes to the beach to sunbathe. There's a vampire on one of these sun loungers. Can you spot where exactly? This pile of ash on the right used to be a vampire. There's a wedding ceremony on the beach. Unfortunately, after dinner, all the males at this party turned into zombies. Can you guess which zombie is her husband? It's this guy. He's wearing a ring. In the evening, Cassie arrives at an abandoned haunted village to film a video for her vlog. She spots five weird things about this place right away. Can you see them too? These orchids have teeth. Who left these huge claw marks on the wall of this house? It's summertime, but there's a snowman in the garden. There are two moons in the sky and this cow doesn't have any shadow. Cassie returns to the hotel and sees a hot mess. Someone has been rummaging through her stuff. 
she interrogates three suspects. The maid says, I cleaned your room in the afternoon. All your clothes and personal belongings were neatly folded in the closet. When I left, I locked the door. The plumber says, I also entered your room in the afternoon to fix the toilet. Luckily, everything's fine now. And Cassie's neighbor says, I was listening to music with headphones, so I didn't notice anything weird. Who's lying? It's the plumber. He said he fixed the toilet, but it's still clogged. One of the hotel guests, Peter, likes Cassie. He wants to impress her and shows her some pictures from his travel blog, but Cassie spots a fake right away. How? Take a look at the wind direction in this picture. In the background, the wind is blowing to the left, but his hair is blowing to the right. Therefore, Richard had photoshopped himself. Someone had broken the most expensive statue in the hotel lobby. The manager interrogates four suspects among the guests to find out who's guilty. Melanie says, I'm not into art. I haven't even noticed this statue before. Steven says, Sorry, dude. I've been out skydiving all day long. Zach says, don't worry, that sculpture was tasteless. I'm an art dealer and I can get you a new one. And Sophie says, I was chilling at the spa, so I didn't see anything. Can you spot who's guilty? <laughs> Melanie, she lost her left earring in the very middle of the crime scene. Cassie gets an invitation from three hotel guests. Gail shows her picture of a fancy villa and says, I'm a billionaire. You're welcome to come over to my villa and stay for as long as you want. Bella hands her two tickets to the opera and says, We can go together tomorrow night. And Ricardo just shows her the keys to his boat and offers a ride across the globe. But only one of these offers isn't fake. Can you help Cassie make the right choice? There's a for sale sign near the villa, so Gail's offer doesn't look trustworthy. Take a closer look at the gate on the opera ticket. It expired centuries ago, so Cassie should trust Ricardo. Cassie goes to the hotel restaurant to have dinner. There's a butterfly hiding among the buffet. Can you find it? It's over here. Brooklyn stayed home alone for a week because her family went on vacation. On Tuesday, she uh -oh. discovers that she only has four breakfast buns left. She doesn't like grocery shopping alone, so she cuts them in half. How many breakfast buns does Brooklyn have now? Brooklyn might now have eight pieces, but it's still just four buns. Mrs. Palmer has three daughters, Iris, Lily, and Rose. She's about to have another girl. What do you think she'll name her? Alice, Hannah, or Poppy? Mrs. Bell seems to choose names of flowers, so she'll probably name the girl Poppy. Penelope went to the doctor, and the doctor gave her three pills that she should take every hour. How much time will pass from taking the first pill to the last pill? Just two hours. Penelope will take a pill, then she'll take a second pill in one hour, and the third pill one hour after that. So, just two hours will pass. Kennedy was exploring an old part of the city and got trapped in some basement. She found three ways out, but none of them seemed safe. Behind the first door, there is a room constructed from magnifying glass. 
The blazing hot sun outside will instantly fry anything or anyone that enters. Behind the second door, there's a lava floor that melts anything. Behind the third door, there's a room filled with poisonous gas that burns the skin. How can uh -oh. Kennedy escape? Kennedy should wait until night and then walk out the first door. Amy goes hiking alone and gets lost. She only has two options, to spend a night in a zombie town or in Werewolf Village. What should she uh -oh. choose? She should stay in the Werewolf Village. Take a look at the sky. The moon is not full, so the villagers are not dangerous. Madeline is a designer. She lives in a one-story house in a city suburb. She has a small garden, and everything in her house is made entirely of redwood because it's her favorite material. What color do you think the stairs in her house are? It's a tricky question. You should remember that she lives in a one-story house, so she simply doesn't have any stairs there. Okay, here's a little riddle for you to think. I have a thousand ribs, but only two backbones. What am I? It's a railroad track. Can you think of a situation when eight plus eight equals four? Yes, it's true when we talk about time. If it's 8 o'clock, then in 8 hours, it'll be 4. Ruby and Scarlet are sisters, and they always play tricks on one another. Today, Ruby came to Scarlet and said, I'll bet you $1 that if you give me $2, I will give you $3 in return. Should Scarlet accept the bet? No, she shouldn't, because even if she wins the bet, she'll lose the money. Ruby might take $2 and say, I lose the bet. I won't give you $3. She will have to return Scarlet $1, but Scarlet will keep the other dollar. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. Instead, he found a witch's house, walked in, patted a cat, and asked the witch to take her home. But the witch had a problem, and she asked Esme to help her. Last week, the witch bought a rabbit. The seller told her that the rabbits breed every month and delivers five rabbits with 60% chance and seven rabbits with 40% chance. How many rabbits will the witch have in a year? Well, that's a tricky question. It takes two rabbits to breed, so unless the witch gets a second one, she'll still have just one. Which of the following statements are true and which are false? One, only one of the statements is false. Two, two of the statements are false. Three, three of the statements are false. Four, four of the statements are false. Five, all five of these statements are false. Since they all contradict one another, only one of them is true, and the other four are false. The only statement that reflects it is statement number four, so that's the correct one. One night a year, Santa Claus stays in his workshop on the North Pole and goes to places to deliver presents. Which direction does he travel first? Santa lives on the North Pole, and wherever you go, the only way to travel from there is south. Ellery has a cat. 
Her friend asked her how old the cat was. And here's what she replied. In two years, the cat will be twice as old as she was five years ago. How old is Ellery's cat? The cat is 12 years old. Esme was having a walk in a forest and got lost. After wandering around for a while, she found the house of a witch and asked her to take her home. The witch shrugged and gave her a bottle with a key in it. The key will open this door and the door will take you home. Take it out, but there are two rules. You can't pull the cork and you can't break the bottle. How can Esme get the key? Esme should push the cork inside the bottle and then take out the key. Now I'll show you some photos, and your task is to figure out what's wrong with them. Ready? Yeah. Here's the first one. There are strawberries growing on the tree. That's not right. What about this one? Do you see a mistake? It's ancient times, but this guy right there is talking on the phone. This can't be true. Next one. Keep your eyes wide open. Do you see what's wrong in this picture? Did you pay attention to the traffic light and its colors? There's purple color instead of green. That's the mistake. Just a couple of more. Don't give up. Anything odd you can spot right here? It's night, but there's the sun in the sky. That's odd. Okay, and the last one here for you. The hardest one. Can you see a mistake in this photo? This woman doesn't get reflected in the mirror. Is it a mistake or is she just a vampire? Ava, Beth, and Chloe are best students in class, and they are participating in the end of a semester tournament. Here's how the rules go. Before hearing the question, a girl chooses a target, one of the other two girls. Then the question is read, and the girl gives her answer. If the answer is correct, the target gets eliminated. If the answer is wrong, then the turn goes to the next participant, who will then choose her target and will get her question, and so on. A subject was drawn randomly. History. Ava isn't very good in history, and her odds of giving the right answer are 1 in 3. Beth is a bit better, and her odds are 2 out of 3. Chloe is a history ace, and her odds of responding correctly are 3 out of 3. Everyone knows each other's odds. To be fair, Ava starts, and then the turn will pass to Beth, then to Chloe, and then back to Ava, and so on. Until there's one last person left. What should be Ava's strategy to have higher chances of winning? Ava should give the wrong answer, even if she knows the correct answer. Then, the turn will pass to Beth. Beth will most likely target Chloe, because she has better odds in the game. If Beth manages to eliminate Chloe, then it's just Ava and Beth left, and Ava's turn and a chance to win. If Beth doesn't eliminate Chloe, then it's Chloe's turn, who will most likely target Beth, and will definitely eliminate her, since her odds are 3 out of 3. Even though Ava will have to go against Chloe at the end, it's still a better situation because she for sure makes it to the second round safely and will then go first with her shot.